Today in this video we're going to go over how to capture personalities and deploy personalities from the point of view of Ghost Solution Suite. Uh, personality is what makes your computer uh, yours, your user profile. Uh, we have a machine here where I've got a whole bunch of files uh, over on it. I've got uh, a bunch of uh, documents. I've got, um, uh, I've got a couple pictures, some downloads. Um, I don't think I have any music. Um, files on the desktop, etc. Some favorites. I think I have favorites. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, in this one, yeah, there's some some favorites on the favorite bar. And what we're going to do is capture most of the personality from this machine and copy it over to this O1 machine that doesn't have any of my information on it. And what we'll do is with capturing of a personality, we have to work from a template. So we will then decide what's important to move over and move those things over based on a template. And the tool that we're going to be using is PC Transplant. And if you go into the program files, Altiris Express Deployment Server is open up here and take a look at the template. I would strongly encourage anyone working with PC Transplant to start with to start with a default template and make changes as necessary, starting with a default. Make sure and make a copy. Uh, the default one here is pretty good, but I would like to copy some office settings. So I'm gonna do the default MS Office, and here's where the file is actually located at, this office template. What we'll do here is create a new template from the predefined template. So that's what we're doing. Uh, template.exe again to get here. We're going to have it capture all users, so we're not going to select anything here, and it's going to gather all the users that are on a machine. We are going to make a couple of changes here that I don't want to have happen. I don't want to have my computer name or my domain status move over with a migration. What that would look like is if I were out deploying a machine and the sales user was getting a brand new machine and I wanted it the new machine joined to the domain and to have the same computer name as it had previously for his old machine I would then use this uh, option here but for our purposes in this demo we're just going to copy the files from one machine to the other maybe the new machine is already on the domain and has a new variant of the name so we're not going to do that by default we have not by default this is the PC uh, transplant for MS Office, so we have a bunch of MS Office files already being gathered. There's some other built-in ones that we can be gathering that are here. We can also then um, modify and make changes. We're going to do very little of that for right now. One thing that we are going to do is add some folders here for the users. So what I would like to do is I would like to gather the favorites. Uh, desktop, so not just the files that are already covered because of our settings, but actually the entire desktop. I would like to gather uh, the music, the documents, I would like to gather the pictures. We can do, as you can see, a lot of different things here. We go ahead and grab the whole user profile, actually, would be fine. Should that include video and uh, the like? Actually, let's do that. Let's just grab the user profile and not the others because that should cover us. There we go. So we have user profile and we can go in here and take a look at some of the advanced things. So if a customer, if an endpoint had things uh, regularly like ISOs or zip files maybe that are very large that we would not want to be copying over, we could then do some exclusions and we could exclude any potentially uh, dot uh, ISO or, or dot zip or dot exe, maybe those sort of things we wouldn't want to be copying over and including, we could exclude them from here. We can also come in here and uh, include and make them go to a new spot. So maybe we would only want to, uh, we would have all the new files going to one spot so that they have a sort of a backup and they have to then move their files out of our backup to make them into their daily use or something like that. So. Anyway, just be aware of some of the advanced things here. It is going to then use some 
wildcards for naming of this. This is good for our console because we're going to be able to push this to a bunch of machines and have it gather up a whole bunch of different profiles based on and named then based on the, the variables that are sent here. If we needed to make these a certain size, we could do so. Otherwise, it'll make them two gigs in size. We are going to do the compression. Basically, we're going to leave the rest of these settings alone. Advanced. Um, where we're going to be putting some of these files if we needed to. Yeah, anyway, just be aware of that they're there. I'm not going to be making changes to them. Okay, we are always going to replace files on the destination. That maybe would not be the case for you, but that is what we're going to do here. Oops. And next, and we would like to save that template file in the same spot as the other template files. So that is the C drive. Programs, Alteris Express, Deployment Server, under PCT, and then the language file that we are working with. So this one is Office and Profile. No domain, because we're not joining the domain or computer uh, name. So we'll save it there. There it is. We'll tell it OK. Here's a summary of what's going to be happening. All the different files that are in question. We can see down here, oops, um, folders, user profile, etc. Okay, so next and okay. Potentially, if we needed to gather it from the customer, we would open it in the text editor so that way we could uh, get a copy of it and see what's there. Also, some customers who are quite old school maybe would want to come in here and modify these manually or they maybe have groups of files that work well and so they would combine them in here. Doing customizations in the template is very much a use at your own risk. With testing we're going to be sticking with very close to if not our default templates. We know that those and expect that those should work properly and if we run into problems in the real world we would maybe revert back to testing on the default templates to make sure that things are working at a base and then we would start uh, customizing to find out what piece didn't work correctly. So we're going to go, we've made a folder called personality jobs and inside of there we're going to make a new job of capture office and profile because that's the template that I'm using. We'll go in here and add a capture personality to this. It's going to ask us for our template uh, file we go we are in our PCT folder in our English folder and I have office profile no domain that we just were editing store the package in so this is where we're gonna save the package file I have a share that we need to put this in and these are the credentials that we need to provide that has access to write to that share where this package is going to get stored at so my username There we go. Now we can put in a password here so that any package, any profile that we gather has a password in it. If we're going to be doing this, we probably should be putting that because we are going to be harvesting a lot of information and that information should be secured at some level um, if you wanted to uh, have a default password that all your profiles are so that if somebody had access to them, they wouldn't necessarily have access to all the files as a result. So advanced here, we can then do our users and so forth if we only want to domain users or local users or so on we're going to leave these unselected because we would like all uh, profiles one thing that's very useful though is profiles last accessed in we'll put 10 days so if my machine had a bunch of different profiles it's only going to be gathering the ones that were accessed in, in this many days so mine uh, been logged into today so we shouldn't have any problems with that but if I had uh, profiles going back several years for maybe uh, projects or users that were no longer even here, we only want to maybe gather the last accessed. It's, it's just a good, you know, we could also do months. Anyway, I'm going to not check these because I'm going to go with, like I say, as default as possible. Um, but be aware, this is a really good one, especially if you have lots of profiles, but you want a generic job that gathers everybody created or accessed in this many qualifiers so oops check and okay next 
and we will finish. Take this job and execute it on my O2 machine. We're going to run this job immediately. Okay, while we are doing that, we can monitor to a bit. Let's go to our uh, E drive and our images folder. And I have some uh, prior files that were in here, but this one right here is being generated. It's based off of the variable, the machine name, CL1010170302. And uh, this is going to be building. We can go and take a look at our client machine here. And we can bring up the task manager and take a look at our details. We will have a PCT Wiz running that is building our activity. So we will let that run. We can see here that we've uh, created the first segment and we're making the next segment. So we're cooking along here. So it's definitely progressing. All right, now that our Capture is completed. We can take a peek at uh, where I captured it at. And you can see we have our EXE plus our 01 and our 02 and our 03 files. So those are about two gigs each and then rolls over. So we can minimize that. And now we can create a deploy job for the same package. And now that we have a job, we will go ahead and distribute personality. We will browse down to my share, select the one in question, and we could again uh, from here. So, so on the creation, we have to provide credentials to read from the, the share. But from here, we can then copy using the Ghost Solution Suite executable. So from the agent to from the server to the agent, or we can directly copy it from the source or we can run it directly from the source. So depending on how much data you have, it may be appropriate to run it right from the source or copy it down first. We're gonna go ahead and let uh, Ghost do the copying and not have to mess with any of that. And we will finish. And now we can deploy this. So we can go look at the 01 machine again. Nothing in pictures, documents, downloads, desktop, they're all clean. And we can go ahead and deploy our package. Oops, no problem with the remotes. And we're going to run this job immediately. And then we just wait for that to take place. If we go to the client, we can bring up the agent and we can see the status of what's happening here. So we are receiving the last file first, it would appear. We're putting it in the Windows temp folder. There we are. Anyway, we can see them starting to happen here. So we'll just let it go. Uh, eventually, we will be able to see in the task manager this time it won't be the PC transplant, it will be instead the CL Win 10 170302.exe running because that was the name of the executable that was built, but it'll have to finish copying down first. So now that our package installation is completed, I can see it took 24 minutes. We can go take a quick look at that client machine. There we go. You can see that it did execute the package close. We've got a bunch of my items on my desktop here. And we should now have documents as well. Uh, downloads, desktop, pictures, anything in music, videos. So anyway, you can see the, the various things. Uh, a few things that maybe would be done differently is to not include large ISOs and maybe large zip files in my template. My profile does have a bunch of ISOs in it, it looked like, and that would uh, certainly clean things up and make my package a little bit smaller. Instead of uh, nearly six gigs, we could uh, maybe slim that down a little bit by not having quite as many files and focusing on just production files instead.